Abused and humiliated by her own family, Amal finally found refuge at the Jordanian Women's Union shelter. What started as a modest hotline offering counseling to abused women has become the only real establishment offering a place for victims to rape and domestic violence. My parents got divorced when I was a baby, so I lived with my mother until I was 15. Then my father took me away from my mother and made me live with him, and he sexually assaulted me. My family threw me out on the street like rubbish because they no longer wanted me, so I went to a detention facility because I had nowhere to stay. Raped by her own father, with her stepmother's approval, she was then married off by force. But that marriage only lasted a few hours, her husband immediately divorcing her when he discovered she wasn't a virgin. Since 1999, this shelter has received hundreds of sexually, physically and psychologically abused women. The shelter can host a maximum of 25 women and is operating at full capacity most of the time. Proof that violence against women in all its forms is an ongoing problem here. The union believes the reasons for violence against women are numerous, but are essentially attributed to regional political turmoil. Historically, the Arab world has always been under occupation. The first of all victims of wars and violence have always been women because they represent the weakest link in society. And they already live in communities that discriminate against women and that are discriminated against by the world. And that's precisely the kind of violence Muna, a divorced Iraqi who fled the bloodshed in Iraq to neighboring Jordan in 2005, has endured. I consider the Americans' invasion of Iraq a crime against humanity. They destroyed the country, the civilization, the very existence of humankind and human dignity, and destroyed the name of Iraq. The president of the union says violence against women is certainly not in decline. The need for this service is increasing every day. That's mainly due to women's better awareness and knowledge of the existence of this service. At the beginning, we operated secretly. We now feel under pressure to accommodate more numbers. The shelter also reaches out to the abusive partner to try to resolve problems peacefully and help stop the violence in the family. But for women like Amal, it will take a new beginning in a fresh environment to help her stand on her feet again. And for Muna, only resettlement in Europe, where her children live with her ex-husband, will guarantee that she gets back her human dignity. Nisreen Shamayla Al Jazeera, Amman. Live now to Cairo and Hibak Osman. She is the chairwoman of Karama, an organization that works to end violence against women. Thank you for your time. First of all, this UN initiative, the uh, Network of Men, I think it's called, names like the uh, Spanish Prime Minister, Mr. Zapatero, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, the Brazilian author, Paulo Coelho, uh, they're being uh, put forward as role models in the fight against violence against women. Do you think they can achieve anything or it's just more of a PR sort of issue? Well, the they certainly are men, and uh, it's extremely important to involve men to fight to, uh, violence against women, and uh, it would help. It would help. I cannot guarantee it's going to make a drastic change in a day, but it will help. We need more men to be involved to end violence against women. But behind that particular initiative, that being the shop front, if you like, is the UN doing enough for you to believe as, as a major world body to really bring this to the fore? I think this whole the new idea to set up an agency that will deal with women's issues is a first step. Uh, the fact that this initiative has been led by 116 organizations that have endorsed it, and it will be led by an undersecretary general, which means that uh, the highest uh, you know, decisions about women's issues will be led by an undersecretary general, uh, and, uh, and it will be it's extremely important. Uh, it's also important the fact that there is going to be, uh, you know, have a, at least between uh, 500 million dollars and 1 billion that will be in that agency. Uh, you know, it's extremely important. There will be presence there. So there, there is a lot of goodwill, mm. you know, uh, maybe five years from now we can see if there is really any difference, if that made any difference. But certainly there, there is a will there. I mean, you know, with certain governments. Okay, you know, let's see. It's, let's it's complicated. Let's zero in on this part of the world. Uh, you heard our report there from Ms. Srinal Shamela. Someone in her report saying that women in the Arab world fall victim to the issues 
uh, in the area, those things like war, conflict, occupation. I mean, is that, is that a fair, I don't want to say excuse, but how does that wash with you, saying that there's violence in this part of the world against women because of the violence that is generally around them? Well, we can make excuses. I mean, governments are, you know, um, are declaring war and, uh, and doing all kinds of things. If they want to make decisions really to fight ending violence against women, they can do that. They can enforce the laws and they can also enforce, uh, 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 you know, the agreements they made to the United Nations like CEDA or Beijing Plus 15. Uh, they can forcefully, they, these are agreements that they have, uh, you know, made 10 years ago or 15 years ago. Th there is no political will in many countries. Mm. You know, and I totally agree with, uh, yeah. Sorry, carry on. Uh, yeah, and I totally agree with the Jordanian Women's, uh, uh, the interview that they had, the Jordanian Women's Union, uh, what they were saying. Uh, mm. there, is, uh, there, is a more, there is an increase of violence, you know, and there is more uh, need for the services. So, um, how you know, though? It's, uh, it, it's very. Sorry difficult. to interrupt you. How, though, is it that in this part of the world and in many parts of the world that the subject is still considered taboo. It's extraordinary to think that violence against women, violence against anyone could be considered a taboo topic. It is a taboo topic because violence against women is, is still considered a private matter. Um, you know, and it's also, it's, it's very culture, it's supposed to be a family affair. The laws that are present in the countries are protecting women in the family but never protect women from the family. So it's, it's very it's seen as a culture, a cultural trend, you know. And again, you have extremism in this, uh, in th in this parts of the world where, uh, you know, governments are absolutely challenged by uh, political uh, extremism. And uh, it's always uh, women's rights is the, a, give, a political giveaway where they, you know, they don't want to touch it because they don't want to be in trouble with the extremists. Mm. So uh, what can I say? There's no political will. Extraordinary. Hibak Osman, great to get your thoughts. Thank you for joining us there from Cairo.